Hi, everybody. Saw that light reflecting in the uh, picture. Oh, well. Hello, everyone. Oh, let me get the audio recording. The problem going live is we can't, like, be ready. It needs to go, like, more to the left so it gets out of the reflection. Is that better? No. It's getting there. Tell me what to do. Can I go? No, I can't really go any further. It's it's kind of is what it is here. Like that? Sure. It's still reflecting, so it's nothing is. You still see it. It's you can't get away from it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> is that any better? No. Well, move back a little closer. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> Super professional production here. It's just so. It's all good. Bright. I know. Well, it's got this like reflection in the glass. Well, here, scooch. There. Oh, there you go. <laughs> angle it or something. Hey. Oh my gosh. Hi, guys. <laughs> All right. It's Wednesday, right time at nine. It is 9 01 p.m. Eastern time where we are. Uh, we're going to hear and talk about pens, take your questions and stuff. So um, we are. Going to experiment trying. We've not been doing any audio podcasts for months now, basically since we stopped doing. Well, this was a Q terrible, a. terrible one to start with. Well, technically, we started last week. But I don't think we. No, published. no, I mean this, we this particular it. one. Oh well, just in general, they're all going to be sort of terrible. <laughs> but it's not an exclusive audio podcast, right? Like we're taking the video portion. And now we audio. are fumbling with our lights. That's right. <laughs> we'll paint a picture with words. <laughs> We are fumbling with our lights and not making it better. Um, so uh, we're working with, uh, you know, somebody who's giving us some pointers and some audio stuff. So at some point we're going to aspire to get audio podcast published again. But, you know, we're stretched a little thin, so we're going to do the best we can. So, um, Alan, good to see you in here. Uh, good to see a bunch of you folks in here, actually. So I've um, got some questions. Everybody's kind of chatting before we came. So that's always cool. We got stuff to show you. Got a few new things. Got some new almost like the uh, See at Dusk. Um, not a ton of new stuff going on this week. We are, we're pretty busy because we have a oh, big things are coming. physical inventory oh, well that. on Friday. This that is that has first... nothing to do with the product launches. I know, That's but just... I'm saying this is just like what's going around in the Goulet office. Okay. So we have not done a physical inventory since before the COVID. And no, we haven't done it hit. since, um, yeah, it's been a while. Have we done it this year? I think it was like December or something, wasn't it? I don't it's, been a while. it's been a number of months. It's been a while. COVID kind of rocked us and yeah. we had a product leaving and coming back to the building and we've had a lot more oversells than we normally would like yeah. to have. So, it's, so it's, again, everything on our website, what you see is in stock is in stock. We don't do the whole, like you thought it was in stock, but then we're like, Hey, JK, it's not here. And we're going to take your money for six weeks. No, like what you see is part of our be honest is what's in stock. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes we make mistakes and it gets off. And then an oversell is what happens when you purchase it and we don't have the product and we have to send you the, the dreaded email um, to apologize and make it right. So um, by counting everything, we can help square up and avoid that situation so that what is in stock is in stock. Yeah. Um, Kitten Canaveral here says, I had a question about the Lamy ST fountain pen. I was wondering if you could get some in. I asked by email recently, but I know you're behind it. I don't think that's brought into the U.S. I've that's never, I've never even aware seen of. it. Yeah. Let's uh, Google it real quick. Lamy it's, ST. Yeah, it's it's not it's not anything. It's brought not, into, a, not a yeah. thing. No. I don't no, know. No, what it no, is. no, it is a thing, but it's not. They haven't imported it in as long as we've been. I need to see what it is. It's long and skinny. It kind of reminds me of like a logo or like the. Um, I mean, that's what's coming up on the site. Oh, here's the, the Lamy site. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a ballpoint. Yeah. But there's a writing version of fountain, a writing version of it. Is late, y'all. Um, they might have discontinued the fountain pen version. I don't even see the fountain version on their site. It just directs to their ballpoint thing. So, so there you go. Not optimistic, but but it was it's long and skinny. It reminds me a lot of the uh, logo or the pure per. That, that could be why they don't have it anymore. Is because it's similar to the other. The ones. Twisby Cement Gray Eco is launching on August seventh. That's pretty firm. Like everyone's launching on that date. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, it'll probably be like you know mid late morning something like that um we have not seen it in person yet so i brett. still can't answer about the gray yeah it, brett, it does brett asks here have you seen it in person it seems the gray looks different in every picture i see yeah 
I agree. I don't even know which one to use. Is like this is the color because I haven't seen it. So we when it, as yeah. soon as it arrives, we're part of the problem because we're just we're putting whatever picture we have of it. Well, we are not. From we are not launching it with those stock images. So as soon as it arrives, we're going to turn around those images as quickly as possible. Unless um, the stock image is like dead on accurate. Well, they're not because I have two different ones. Yeah. So I need to figure out which one is <laughs> right and which one's wrong. But either way, when you purchase the um, cement gray eco from us, you will see color accurate images on our site. That is our, our, uh, plan. <laughs> Before you load it into cart and pay for the it, new Visconti opera master. Um, that is the Polynesia. Um, yeah, it should be, it should be August. Um, it should be coming pretty soon. Um, mm -hmm. that'll be the first to feature the, uh, the in-house 18 karat gold nib that Visconti has been working on for quite some time. Um, yes. They've been using Bach nibs and they've been working on developing their own in-house nibs. So assuming the quality, everything is good, this mm -hmm. will be the first to launch they've been, with They've that. been working on this for some time and wanted to be very intentional about which pen they put it on first. It's just on sure this it's pen. Just right. <laughs> it's not a hard cut over. They're still going to have Bach nibs and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I've been told the that- The special edition is available now. Yeah. I've been told that Visconti is prepared if, well, for whatever reasons, in-house nib does not meet muster, that they're still going to continue with Bach. So they're yeah. not going to like, not it's not just like a hard cut over, you know, they're very yeah. intentionally trying to do this. So we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. But at the same time, we are cautiously optimistic because yeah. it's an in-house nib. Nibs are hard to make. We're not going to put Visconti. out a product that we don't believe in. We're not going to put out something with, you know, quality issues. So, Definitely. but um, yeah, it should be, should be sometime August. I'm guessing still probably at least two weeks out because we haven't heard anything more specifically. There you go. GV says, from me and my wallet, thank you, Gulez. I'm poor. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you're rich in pens in spirit and pens, hopefully. Um, are you getting back stipul inks back in Frank? I don't no plans. think we have any plans to carry them, Frank. No. They're pretty expensive, you know, which they're fine. They're good quality inks, but they just didn't sell well yeah. for us at all. At all. Arc Image ordered the Ebony today. Fantastic. You're going to love it. It's a great pen. Uh, all right. What else we got here? Alan had a TI number eight Bach, never warmed to it. Got a gold and I'm completely happy. Yeah, the titanium nibs are Very hit or miss. something to take some getting used to. Number yeah. eight, though. What titanium number eight? I've never used one of those. Maybe you meant number six, but you know your stuff, Alan. I'm curious as to what pen you. Uh, had a titanium number eight on. I've never used one of those. All right. Let's hear what else we got here. Keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There you go. A question about heat setting a plastic ah, feed. Yeah. You watched Brian's video on heat mm -hmm. setting an ebonite feed. Under which circumstances would you try to heat set a plastic feed? So, um, you know, for those that don't know what heat setting is. Check um, out his video. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like an expert on this. I mean, this is, I know enough to be dangerous. Um, and we've put some video content out that feels good. We talked to several Nibmeisters. Um, the idea behind heat setting is that when you have a nib that's metal, right? And then you have a feed, which is not metal, ebonite or plastic is pretty much what it's going to be. Um, the idea is you heat up the feed material and then you press the heated, you heat up the feed basically to make it pliable. And then when that nib is pliable, you then press it up to meet the underside of the nib and it's to get a good fit to get proper capillary action. That is the concept. Now, depending on the material, depending on the design of the feed, it's gonna heat maybe at different temperatures, heat easier, bend easier and these such things. So um, generally speaking, ebonite is a more ideal material because it's a hard rubber. It's gonna be a little more forgiving. Um, plastic is harder to heat up and bend. So you can still do it. The concept is still the same. It just takes a little more force and. Um, if you overheat a plastic feed, there is no repairing it because you're basically going to melt it and you can't put it back. So ebonite's a little more forgiving in terms of the heat. Um, you can do a couple different ways. You can heat it with a flame, which is for the brave souls. Um, that's kind of the old school way to do it. Uh, I do not do it that way. I use hot water. So basically if you heat up water, like two minutes in the microwave, basically at like coffee brewing temperature, um, maybe let it come off a little bit. You don't want it to boil, but you know, hot enough so that it's, you know, going to, Get, get the feed heated up. You might have to experiment, especially with a plastic feed, about how long you leave it in the hot water. And then as you bend it up, it's probably gonna take a little bit of force, but it can be done. It's just, it just takes a little practice. But the idea is that it improves the ink flow and the consistency of flow, um, matching that feed to the nib. Cool. All right, what else we got? Oh man, this thing jumps around. 
We have a lot of questions. Okay, no, down. Oh, here we go. Right there is where we left off. All right. All right, Brooke says, when it comes to the pilot decimo, is it known for being finicky with ink? I've been having lots of issues finding an ink for mine that keeps a good flow and doesn't dry out too quickly. I haven't heard anything specifically about the decimo differently than the vanishing point. I mean, so that's the click. Same nib unit. Click retractable. Yeah. yeah, the nib unit itself is the same, but like the trap door and like the design, it's just a thinner body. Um, but basically everything else is pretty much the same on that pen. So it should be consistent with the vanishing point, but you know, it is a retractable nib. It doesn't have a screw cap. So depending on what you're comparing it to, maybe you could say that it doesn't, you know, it dries off faster than certain other pens you have. We find it to be kind of middle of the road. It doesn't dry out super fast. It doesn't last as long as some others that, you know, like maybe Twisby or Pilot Custom 74 or something else that has like an insert Platinum 3776. Won't, won't last quite as long as those as far as drying out goes. But um, I would recommend just cleaning it really thoroughly um, because if you have any kind of dried up ink or anything like that that happens um, over time in that feed, then um, it's going to it's going to exacerbate any of those kind of drying out issues because there's just less flow happening in that feed anyway. So give it a really, really good cleaning and uh, see what happens then. All right. You can ask more Chinese pens like Pen BBS, Delike, or Moonman pens. No plans at this time. And what I will say is getting things out of China right now is very difficult. Um, yeah, yeah. Really, like Asia in general. <laughs> Um, because, you know, we have like a few lay notebooks that have been back ordered for quite some time. Um, the ports are just locked up. COVID has just wrecked um, transportation in general. Yeah. Even USPS domestically, I was looking at their site and they basically said um, for first class and priority packages, like they've basically added a day to what they normally do. So priority means mm -hmm. normally two to three days or like three to four days, you know. Everything is backlog. Customs is backlog. So trying to procure new things out of China right now, the timing just isn't great. Um, great. So it's something we could look at for next year. A lot oh, of yeah. a lot of the difficulty with some of these brands is we just we simply cannot figure out who to purchase from. Um, you it's know, not like established distributorship. With exactly. This kind of stuff. So and we don't speak Chinese, so it's a, a bit. Or, it's a bit challenging. Yeah, it's it's a bit difficult to. Yeah, there's a reason out. you don't see them available many places. Well, and and the other issue too is it, right now it's still very easy to um, flood the U.S. market directly um, yeah. at very very low prices for us to carry it and then get the proper markup to make it worth our time. We wouldn't be able to sell it. The prices price. end up being double, triple. You know, when you add the import costs, customs, like just just Shipping. the freight and customs has doubled or tripled in the last year because of covid so mm -hmm. um yeah it's just it's 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 not where we're going to focus right now yeah unfortunately a little behind the scenes of uh, how things work logistics michael stroh says what are your thoughts on the giovo 1.1 stub nib never bought a stub nib before are they generally on the smoother side yeah yeah they're really good i would yeah. say if it's going to be one of your first introductions to a stub nib it's a good one it's a really good one generally pretty smooth now it's a stainless steel nib, so it's not going to have any real flex or any bend to it. It's going to be a very stiff nib. Um, doesn't actually have any tipping on the nib. You know, there's such a big surface area on that 1.1 nib that they basically just polish up the stainless steel itself. Uh, that said, we've been selling these for years and really never seen a wear issue um, with these because it's the stainless steel is pretty darn tough. And uh, you know, again, because you've got such a surface area, it really spreads that out. It's pretty durable stuff. So um, I think it's a fantastic introduction. Yep, and it's on the uh, I've seen side. a couple questions about the Wicked Witch of the West about restocking. Mm -hmm. So we got a very small restock. Yeah. Um, it did sell out pretty quickly. Again, there is another much larger shipment coming in August. We believe that from that point on, we shouldn't have as many stockouts as we've had because um, the Wicked Witch of the West, and we're talking about the Sailor 1911, um, is an ongoing uh, North American exclusive. It's not a like limited run special thing. It just was very... Uh, start and stop at launch, but mm -hmm. we believe from August on it'll it'll be available yeah. going. So just just hang on a couple more weeks. We're told there will be no more stock issues. Do you have August. one to show? Wicked Witch. Yeah. Yeah. I have some other things to show too. Da -da 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 -da. The Diamond Ink Vent bottles mm -hmm. restock. We were told the end of July, and here we are. So um, hopefully soon. Again, I'm going to blame everything on. COVID and customs and all the things. Yes, there will be another run of the Prussian blue. I believe it'll be in about a week, week and a half. Um, I think I think the shipment was supposed to leave maybe tomorrow. So we'll, a we're about a, a week or two out from Prussian blue restock. Yeah. 
Ta-da. Very slightly translucent, maybe like 10%, 15%. You like shine that. a light. Yeah, you shine a light. You can definitely see through the cap a little bit. Hmm. There you go. Hmm. There you go. There you go. Very low quality uh, video here, but you can see it. Ah, <laughs> blinded by the light. Okay. And then um, there's the words I always mess up. Yes. Um, what else we got? Um, okay, we'll be leaving here another run. I answered you just that. answered that. Yep. yep. Keep one. Okay. You want to scroll here too? There we yeah, go. Can't you can share, reach, the, can't reach share the, the doodad. The scroller. Yes. Da, 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 answer that. And take a sip Keep of water. While down. You're scrolling. Um, with all the difficulties of 2020 and the pandemic, can you share with us some of the spectacular things that happened for you in business during these times? Mm. That's a great question. Because we talk about like Keeping all the, it positive. The I love things. it. Um, we successfully transitioned to remote working, which we really had never done before. Like yes. occasionally there'd be a person or two who might take their laptop home here and there, but like as a team and as a communication, never in, as we'd a never like done before. Yeah. So we had to get everyone VPN. Mm -hmm. We had to get everyone set up, um, you know, to, to be secure and do that with everything. And we, we had to revamp so many of our processes, but I would say we did it very successfully, very quickly. Um, I will also say the morale of the team through this period has been incredible. The trust that they have in us as their leaders, yeah. um, the unity honestly has just never been stronger. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's a kind of we're all in this together mentality that has kind of uh, spun up. Yeah. And we actually like literally all day today, we had our executive leadership off-site planning, which we do quarterly, we're off off-site anyway. So it was a, you know, Google Hangout. Our first uh, off-site off-site. Right. Which when you're on a video for a while, at the end of it, I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm going a little cross-eyed here. And then yeah. we had another meeting after that and whatever. But um, we were talking about like our thematic goals for the rest of the year and talking about just different themes that have come out and like resilience and things like that have been uh, things that have come out. And just honestly, the care we have for one another, um, for yeah. our for our team members, the grace we've been able to give each other, the understanding that like, hey, especially those of us with kids or those with elderly, parents, mm -hmm. whatever, things just are not normal. We're not as productive. It's just harder, yeah. but we're giving each other, um, showing each other a lot of kindness. Yeah. So figuring out remote work. That's been a good one. And we found some efficiencies in the process and stuff too. Um, I think our our one... building has never been cleaner. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true on so many levels. It's um, helped us also like figure out what's most important. Um, and we're not like growing for the sake of growing or busy for the sake of being busy, but like really uh, kind of choose those things. No, this is not a, a rotten pen case. It, well, it's a cake. Whoops, I just threw my flesh. I just blinded myself again. <laughs> um, got it, Target. It's a Kate Spade. Not that I care much about it, but there are like these little like just raised pearly things. It's kind of cool. It looked kind of neat. That's all. That's cool. I needed a case. Not significant. And <laughs> it was the least offensive to me. No, another really, really cool thing has been the amount of time we've gotten to spend with our families. Oh, yeah. You know. Kids. With our kids. It's yeah. been a mixed, a mixed bag. And together. But um, yeah, I mean, we are looking <laughs> at, well, we, we will be home with our kids for the whole school year. Um, and looking that way. Yeah. It's either going to be virtual remote or we're contemplating homeschool, like pulling them out of the system and actually doing homeschool ourselves. Um, because we think it might fit our, our lifestyle, yep, our some, schedule a little better. We got some comments last week about when we were like talking about the kids and like how very realistic our responses were. That's because we are it's a cluster in it with everybody else. We are trying to figure Every out. Every county has a different what? plan. There are, I was talking to some of you recently. And, and we, you, do, we do not need to go off on a rant. No, no I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to do rant. I've done <laughs> enough of that today. I have very strong feelings about how some things are being uh, going about. Some of you don't even know what your children's plans are yeah. yet. And I like, look. That baffles me a little, I'm not, a little no, bit. Well, but, look, you know. everyone's trying to get it right. The information is changing daily, weekly, whatever. So it's, it's the, I'm not gonna now. rant because I could, but I won't because it just- But we won't, but we won't, but we won't. So we won't. But what I'm gonna <laughs> say is we're all in this together. I know it sounds like a cliche, but like you, if you're struggling, you are not alone. Wasn't that a high school musical song? What? We're all oh. in this together. I haven't seen the movie. That's but the only part I know too. Is that the main song or something? It's anyway. one of the songs. So um, heart, ironic, heart, heart, like, goes no parents, heart goes out to all the teachers out there. Oh my gosh. Administrators. administrators. Staff, we everyone. do not envy you. We do not envy you in any way. It's an impossible task to please everybody and it's not going to happen. But anyway, 
So I'm going to be home for another year for sure. And he's going to help me out and we're going to figure it out. Home and work and, and all kids, over the place. Our kids are honestly excited. They're like, mommy, you get to be our teacher. They really and are. And then our daughter, we've, She's we've, like, we've talked on and off about, so we've never had a pet because with us going to work and so we couldn't oh, handle it. We can't handle it. We've been thinking in the last couple months about a hamster because some of their friends got a hamster. I had hamsters growing up. That was the only thing we ever did. And I'm like, I'm kind of warmed up to it and stuff. So our daughter today, she's like, if we homeschool, can we get a class pet? Can we have a hamster for our, our class pet? I'm like, all right. Like, I'm, I'm open to it. I got to work on daddy a little bit. But uh, She spent like all day out of like pulling like cardboard out of the recycling thing and like built this entire this like home and a maze for this hamster that we may or may not get elaborate like hamster maze house including like, like a little chair with a cushion cartons. and a blanket she had me like hot Packing glue together and, and yeah it's adorable i when she busted that out and like we were like having our offsite and like really having these intense conversations and then she's like Daddy, can you help me glue my glue. my hamster like cage or thing and whatever? And I was like, oh my gosh, we're getting a hamster, aren't we? Like, <laughs> okay. So I'm uh, Larry to call the shots. If any of you do homeschool, I would love any advice because <laughs> look, look, I'm overwhelmed by all the curriculum choices and um, <laughs> trying to figure out what align. Because you know our plan is to put them back in public school next year. But anyway, if you have any advice, um, I'm, yes, I'm, Ellie is a genius. I Ellie is. Ellie is rather. Um, what's the word? Well, she's a, she's a pretty strong little child. She's very determined. Yeah. And also can be extremely patient when yeah. she has her mind set on something. So she's being very she's being very patient. She's not being annoying about the hamster thing. She's being like, I know we haven't said we get one yet, but if we got a hamster, this is where it could live. <laughs> you know, like that kind of language. And we're just like. Man, yeah, she's got us. Get this she's girl. got us wrapped around. We got to get this girl making YouTube videos. She's wrapped around her defense. finger for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mercy. Okay. Anyway, um, so that's it. That's just yeah. where we're at. That's where we're at. So, um, I yeah. So there's a lot of good mm. that has come out of it. Um, but the, that quality time has been just amazing. Yeah. Uh, another really good thing is like. The, exactly. The yeah, that, that's part of the homeschool. So I don't have to spend six hours on and off Zoom all day. Yeah. It's we can get it done in like two or three or yeah. spread throughout the day. Um, well, I was gonna I was gonna shift gears a little bit. Oh, let's talk about a pen. Yes. Yeah, okay. So some of you have asked about this. Um, we I believe are the first in the country to have and launch this. This is the Lummy Studio Glacier Blue. And I'll show you the grip section. I think we showed this last week, but I'll show you again. So this is the 2020 Special Edition Studio. Someone did ask about an Ion Special Edition. I have not heard about one this year. Um, we still have the blue and the red from like last year in stock, um, uh -huh. but I haven't heard I haven't heard of one this year. I may have heard something, but I have no official news to share. Oh, interesting. I know there is really a new question. there is a new Lamy model coming out this fall. They've teased it a little bit on on social, so that that's exciting. Um, yes. Other random things, we just, just have um, the Field Notes Summer Edition, the oh, Heavy Duty. Um, it's a two-pack of these wirebound with these, you know, pretty sturdy covers. What's interesting about these is they are lined on one side and graph on the back. Mm -hmm. So you can flip it, you know, whichever way best meets your needs. Um, it's got, you know, rulers on the back. It comes with this, like heavy duty rubber band, you can like keep it closed. Um, so, you know, it's always cool. Field notes is always innovating. So just want to show those. Yeah. Um, let's see. So we launched a new Elmo, a Monte Grappa Elmo Sea at Dusk. See at Dusk. So this launched earlier this week. So it's that new Monte Grappite, Monte Grappite uh, resin, which basically is a custom resin that they make themselves in house. Um, very similar, um, in the same style as the uh, Wave Splash, which we also recently launched, and the Chrysocola. So these are the three colors for this year. Um, they came a little sooner than we were expecting, but we're like, well, we might as well launch them. So these are, really... these are Gula exclusives out of 300 each, um, and we still have plenty plenty of stock. Um, it's, really, it's really cool how they make these. So I got to... When yeah, we so were can there you, can last, you talk a little bit about it? Yeah, so when we were there last September, um, they showed Drew and I some like early prototypes of this material before anything had come out with it. So we kind of got to see and we and we got to sit with Giuseppe and uh, 
he explained what this material, or at least kind of the process of how it's made. So they developed this custom uh, at Monte Grappa. And they, um, it's essentially like an extruded material. So they can mix different colors. They can have different levels of transparency. And so there's like kind of a clear base and they add these different kind of opaque colors to it. And then it kind of extrudes out and depending on the speed at which they extrude it and what they do to it as it comes out, it gets these really kind of cool, like almost like brush mark effects. Um, so uh, it's extruded into these rods and then it's, it's turned into this resin. So it's not like an injection mold type thing. Um, it's actually, you know, made into rods and then they turn it just like they do with the normal resins. But it gets this really cool, intense, like kind of color and like striated kind of effect. And each one is going to look a little bit different. Some of them, I think it depends on some where it is in the rod. Some of them get more swirls and some are more straight. So like the yeah. wave splash in particular, and we, we, we show- it can vary a lot. Check out the images on our website. This one's a bit more um, straight. We have some other ones that are just like circle on circle on circle. It's, it's very interesting, the variation. Yeah. Um, I do want to also highlight the violet, which is the just a, a more of a traditional resin. We do still have in stock as well. And if you're thinking it's about it, um, check it later in the week because um, it may be it at a special price. Special and then just for funsies, um, these are the three Elmos some that we ones. had done before. So these are all the exclusive Elmos that we have done to date. That's a lot um, of them. <laughs> not in order, I think. The blue, the blue is no. The green was first. Oh gosh, the red, the red was now. the red was first. Okay. Yeah, the red was first, then the green, then the blue, then the there purple. You there you go. And then um, the, also a little black. Then the chrysocolla, then the wave slash. There you go. Then the um, see at dusk, and then there's also the um, the fantasy bloom series that also came out. So there's a lot of Elmos going on right now. It's a sweet pen. It the is nib is the same on all of them. It is a Yovo number six nib. Steel, um, it's stainless steel nib. Steel, it but, is engraved with like the monograppa. But they also they it's yeah. a stainless steel nib, but they plate it in rhodium. You, and it's so funny because Drew and I were both like, man, these nibs just seem to pop just a little bit more than a conventional Yobo nib. It's because they plate it in rhodium, so it's just a little bit shinier. So there you go, just little touches like that that they do that uh, make it classy. Yeah, someone asked about the fountain pen friendliness of the field notes. Um, yeah, these are these it's are going to be your your average fine. field notes fountain pen friendliness. Not like the ne the not, expedition that like wouldn't use fountain pen ink at all. <laughs> no, it's not a they're fine fountain pen product per se, but it's like kind of the minimal acceptness of a fountain pen paper. <laughs> yeah, there's meets, there's there's a bit of weight to it. It's not crazy heavy. It's it's a little lighter than the studio. Sure. I mean, it's a resin pen, but they actually with the Elmo they actually add a brass tube on the inside to add a little bit of weight to it because um, otherwise Feels, it would be really light. Well, all the tech specs are on our site. Um, it's not too much heavier than a Lamy 2000. Yeah, it should be pretty spot on there. Um, we did have a question that was back there a little bit about what's the difference between the Lamy 2000 14 karat nib and the 14 karat nib on say a Lamy Dialog 3. Or a this studio a, or- Or yeah. studio, it's the same nib. Yes, you can post Elmo. So we do get asked about these nibs from time to time. There you go. It's a nice pen posted too. It's a good balance. The cap isn't really heavy. It's the body that's got most. This of purple is one of my personal. It's it's one of my go tos. Uh, again, broad. That Yobo. broad is Woo, beautiful. So this this is I always have this one inked up at the ready. There you go. So the fourteen karat nibs. Yes, they're both fourteen karat. The design is completely different. So I actually find that the nibs have a little more bounce to it on the um, Dialog Studio, whatever the regular like replaceable um, nib here. It's obviously a lot shorter on the Lamy 2000. So it's just not gonna have as much kind of give to it because it you don't have as much leverage on it and you don't really want it going anywhere. Um, it's very smooth. Okay, it's just like <laughs> reaching in the middle. It's a very weird sensation. Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to be like all discreet. <laughs> you were not being like, discreet. Can I just have the bin? Is this like not, okay. Let me, let me just take yes. the bin. Yes. The bin of wonders. Yeah. So, um, you know, there you go. Nib, uh, the the grind is a little bit different too. It's got a little more of a sweet spot on the Lamy 2000. Sometimes it's getting a little bit used to, but um, usually people come to love this very much. Um, this one, pretty much uh, people love it right away. It doesn't take a lot of getting used to the uh, Lamy, Lamy Dialog 14K nib. Both great nibs. Both have a little different feel to it. Um, the Lamy 2000 takes a little more getting used to, but the form factor of the Lamy 2000 is just so good that it's worth any any initial 
Is the broad scratching to. not at all? It is a gorgeous, no. gorgeous, wet, flowing broad that I just love so much. Um, someone asked if, if Yovo between different companies write similarly. I would say generally, question. yes. Um, different companies may tune their nibs um, yeah. slightly differently. And like Conklin and Monteverde, there's a slightly different curvature to the nib based on how they fit their housings because they don't use... Yovo housings, <laughs> that's my alarm to make the sure the kids are done. actually in bed lights out. Um, yeah, but they're, they're going to write pretty similarly across different different. Companies. Generally speaking, yeah. Generally. It may be speaks a little bit different. And the thing we'll say, too, we're talking like the Yovo, more or less the like number six, number six, number five kind of standard ones. Yovo makes nibs for other companies that we may not even know that they make them for. Um, you know, they are a major nib manufacturer and they are, you know, they're what you would call an OEM manufacturer. So they're making nibs for other companies with their brand, their name, you would never know that it's Yovo that's making it. So unless a company basically publicizes, I mean like Montegrappa as an example, unless you kind of just asked or knew, I mean, you can kind of tell from like little swirl pattern that's similar to their kind of their stock Yovo nibs. Um, but basically it's got Montegrappa's logo. You really would never know almost otherwise that it was a Yovo nib unless it was publicized as such, which they do. Um, you know, brand's got a good reputation. So most companies, are going to say that it's Yovo making their nibs because it adds to some credibility. But there may be other companies that choose not to. So it's very possible that it could be made differently. You can make nibs to basically any specifications you want. Um, so just because it's Yovo that's making a nib doesn't mean it's all going to be the same. But that said, the kind of the standard number six Yovo nibs that we find, there is a level of consistency across most of the brands that uh, use them. Someone's asking about a number six versus number five. I'm trying to find a number five. I really don't have. Is it Twisby five or is it a four? Uh, Twisby's number five. Okay. The 580 is a number five. Yeah. 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 So I have two completely random pens. Twisby's another one that you wouldn't know that it's Yovo nib. Mm -hmm. um, Twisby uses Yovo. Yeah. Um, and I know these are different colors, so it's a little harder <laughs> to see, but this is a number six. And this is the number five. Yeah. So the length is going to be the main difference. Um, yeah. And then in terms of how they write, not necessarily such a huge difference from one to the other. And I'll say Twisby's Twisby's number five is on the fatter side too. Not all of the number fives that Yovo makes are that wide. I do I do like those uh, five eighty broads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Someone I, if. I, I was going to say it and then I didn't. Someone's asking about the Herbert. Um, it did get a little delayed. So we're about two weeks out from launching the Herbert. So this is the fan. Yeah. Uh, the color is River City. This is gorgeous. That's so good. So, so good. about two weeks out from that. Um, we're also about two weeks Maybe out. More. Maybe more. It could be delayed. It, it could be. For sure. E everything Don't hold us to that date. About. I'm saying at the earliest. Um, also the Stipula Adagio. This is our purple exclusive. Oh, that color. Is some sweet resin. So good. So those are those are a couple weeks out as well. Yeah. Where are the kiddos? We miss them. They're reading upstairs. Yeah, they got a bunch. They of got new some books new books today, today, so they are. So they've they're been reading. very well behaved. That and they've been building hamster houses. Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Brian, have you thought about making your own Goulet exclusive pen, Keith? Um, you know, we've been working with other manufacturers to do exclusives exclusive colors and models and things like that. That has been keeping us pretty busy. I will say right now with COVID and the kid situation and all that, it is not going to make any sense for us to manufacture our own pens in house mm -mm. for the foreseeable future, because it doesn't make sense to have people in our building manufacturing things. So don't look for our own custom in-house thing. If we did, we would work with a manufacturer who's already got those processes down. We may design something with them and collaborate and do some custom things, but not like making our own brand in-house. Um, a question about if we're getting Scribo pens and ink. Um, and you, you have a Scribo or I did you borrow do it? Have one. They're really nice. So they're, Scribo yeah. is a small company um, startup in Italy that's a spinoff of some of the folks who used to work at Omas. Um, and there that's are like a spinoff. They well, have like the soul of the soul. They're like the people. The, there's, the, there's, there's several a bunch former of the employees. People. Yeah. Um, have now gone to the, like a lot of the heart and soul of OMAS, especially the flexible nibs yeah. um, that they're using are, you know, the same, I don't know if it's the same tool. Basically the same the nibs, same yeah. They acquired or, a lot of the same equipment to yeah. make those nibs. So like OMAS basically got chopped up into pieces. And the name here and the materials so here down. and the, you but know, whatever. So, but the nib, the nib stuff and several of the nib people ended up going uh, and starting Scribo. So we were talking about it. Um, the, the product offering isn't very 
large. Again, they're they're a startup. Um, it's something we've talked about maybe for next year, but right now we're on a new brand kind of uh, pumping the brakes a little bit because this is we a tough just, one because we're making sure that internally yeah. we can handle all this. And we stuff. have good relations from our Omos days with you know some of the people over at Scribo, and yeah. we've wanted to carry it. We've kind of punted it and punted it. it. The timing just hasn't been right yet. It hasn't been right. We feel terrible for that, but. It is a really great pen. Now it's it's a little on the more expensive side because mm-hmm. um, they're you know basically a startup company and it's all made in Italy and everything. Um, so the price I want to say is around the six fifty mark. I thought it was like eight hundred, but it's a little, a little higher. Yeah. It's up there. But you know, gold nib, ebonite feed. So it's like if Mid-high you liked figures. the way Omos wrote, that's this. Um, you know, one body style, the feel, Scribo feel. That's this pen. Um, piston filling pen. So you get a lot going on for it, but you know, it's got kind of this, it's a little bit bigger pen. Mm-hmm. Um, the balance is nice. It is a really nice writing pen, um, but it's, you know, pretty, pretty plain colors and stuff like that. Not a lot of flash and pop going on with them. So, you know, we have, uh, we have just, it's not a no, it's just a- Not right now. Later. We're, we're, we're because of our, a mm-hmm. lot of us who are affected by the school situation and stuff, we're, we're kind of pumping the brakes a little bit on some of our mm-hmm. new brand acquisitions and things like that. And just trying to stabilize uh, things a little bit. Um, so a couple questions about taking care of ebony wood. Yeah. You're the wood guy. How do you take care of a wood pen? Um, I would say you don't really need to do much with it. It depends what you want it to look like over time with any wood pen. Um, it's going to naturally patina a little bit over time, especially in the parts that you're touching it more. Your hand oils are going to change the finish just a little bit. Personally, I have never done any refinishing of any kind on any of my wood pens. I just think that it's good to let them be what they are. Um, let your hand oils kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Your hand oils are going to make it patina parts of it a little bit. The risk with like trying to put any oil on it or do anything is it can be inconsistent and it can, you know wear off over time and stuff like that. It could change the color of it and all that. And it's just not, to me, it's not worth it. I think it's better just to let it be. Someone asks, is there going to be a restock of the Sparkle Esterbrook Brook or another pen with a diamond crush material from Mackenzie? So um, the answer to the Esterbrook is, I believe we did get our final restock. Mm-hmm. Um, so anything we're out yeah, of. They think, I think they have made all that they're going to make. I, I believe. Of that. I believe color. we got. I believe it came in the, the final shipment. We had like two shipments. I think I think I remember seeing that um, a that few right? days ago. Okay. Um, will there be another pen with the diamond cast material from Mackenzie? Um, yes, we have one that we are working on, not with uh, not with Esterbrook, mm-hmm. but with another brand that we uh, frequently Can't say do, yet. Can't frequent, say frequently frequently do things with. Can't say yet, but it's gonna be great. Late August. Yeah, Tim's a great guy. He's developed some really cool stuff. He's working with several different more kind of boutique manufacturers. We got, um, we got a pen we're working on. Yeah. As to whether or not Esterbrook will do it again, I mean, this pen seemed to be a hit, so I would be surprised if they refused to in the future, but we do, we don't we don't know. All oh. right, let's see. Um, do you have a triple broad nib on it? I don't know which pen we're talking about. Oh, that one. What nib is on your Scribo? That's a great question. Is our normal time of day bottom mm-hmm. shelf items are posted or is it relatively random? Um, I'm going to say it's random. Um, it's basically as random, some yeah. of the folks in the office, because um, you have to physically deal with the product. Okay, what's wrong with it? Listing it. Um, it's as they have the time to squeeze them in. If we have like a big rush of returns, then, you know, sometimes we have a big bash, batch of bottom shelf, but um, no particular day or time. You just have to keep checking. Mm-hmm. So I have a fine 14 karat flex screebo. Um, someone asked if we would ever consider carrying entry-level sailor pens like the Lacole, Le 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 I never don't know how to pronounce that one, or Pro Color. Um, yes, Le we are Coulo, carrying the nice. Sailor Compass, which is also known as the Profit Junior mm-hmm. um, in other markets. That is coming in a couple weeks, and that's really exciting. It's going to be a nice packaging with a pen, a matching converter, matching, um, or I think it comes with black cartridges. Um, in, in a box. And I believe stuff. that's the first stainless steel nib sailor they've had in the U.S. Uh, it is. It's been available in Japan for a while, but yeah. And there's like nine colors demos. There. They're really nice. So check that out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Did you do a staggered release on Conklin sold out during weekend, then restocked Monday morning to my delights already in my hand right now? Um, mm. 
Not specifically. It could be that we had a canceled order from the weekend, and so it went back in stock Monday morning. Mm-hmm. Could be. Um, I don't believe. Could be a split shipment that's happening a lot these days. Yeah, I did see. I, we, I did see we restocked some things on Saturday too, because we have people working all kinds of hours right now to, mm-hmm. to make it work. It's nothing uncommon right now for us to have a shipment out for delivery. It's it might been, be five boxes and three of them arrive one day and two of them arrive two days later it's, for no reason it's whatsoever. It's been uh, very challenging <laughs> trying to plan out like email promotions, marketing and stuff because stuff just is not arriving when it's said it will. And you guys on the receiving end, you've probably experienced the same thing. Um, oh, it's but so, it's not just USPS. It's it's UPS, FedEx, it's all, all of them. them. All of them. I mean, the, the whole system is stretched. They're right stretched. Now. Yeah. Some hard work. Do we have any shipping delays? Not on our end. We are caught up um, pretty Mm -hmm. much most of the time. If you order, we ship same or next business day Um, getting to you. um, That's on USPS. And we have seen some delays, but Mm -hmm. no more. Especially international. Usually. Well, international is a whole different mess. But even domestically, I'd say add a day to what you're normally used Mm -hmm. to expecting in transit for us, like from place ordered out the door, same or next business day. I think Alan's excited about the Sailor Compass. <laughs> <laughs> Survivor guy, how many pens do you guys own? Well, all of them, I guess, technically. Any new green pens coming? Uh, I'm just going to flash this. Oh, Rachel. Here's the tease. It's not the final version, so I'm not going to show you. But yeah, there's a green pen coming later this year. There you go. Eculate pens. Would you consider the Sea of Dusk a green pen or is that more? No, that's a blue pen. The Chris oh, Cola is, is green. Yeah. Chris Cola is blue what blue I'll call pen. a teal green. Yeah. Yeah. That's a teal green. We'll have a green compass. There will be two green compasses. There's a green mm-hmm. and an olive green. You yeah. don't have yours with you because we, we lent Glenn, it back. Yeah, Glenn shooting. We out. finally updated our pen plaza. It had been five months since mm-hmm. we had updated it pre-COVID. And we had this gi- we had, giant what, backlog. 57 50, pens? No, 57 images that 57 got images. Okay. Yeah, so like all sailors up in there now, um, all the new venues, like everything we've launched in the last five months in the pen plaza. So check that out. Yeah. Um, uh, Connor, Mc- Connor, I'm <laughs> sorry, I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, what pens do you give new team members? I'm curious. This can vary a little bit, you know. Um, yeah, usually so we try to give a little variety. Yeah, there's pens um, when you first start. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes even in the interview process, depending on the role. Um, like, you know, when we interviewed our photographers, we gave them one to like shoot and we're like, mm-hmm. okay, you can keep it. Yeah. Um, generally, we'll start someone out with like real basics, like, a preppy and like a varsity. Shark pen. Yeah. Twisby Eco. Um, when someone hits their 90 days, they get to pick a pen of their choice up to a certain value. And mm-hmm. then again, when they and hit they, their... Because by then they've gotten kind of a taste for what's around. What they like. And then at and their, so we let them is choose. it their one year anniversary, they also get an allowance mm-hmm. to choose. There's a lot of opportunities for like store credit and you know, all employee, these types of things. We have an employee discount program. So yeah. Uh, some people, it's like every paycheck, you know, <laughs> you know. You can tell how long they've been there by how many pens they've, you know, gotten. <laughs> um, oh, I want to talk real quick. Someone mentioned M800. Um, Pelican, check your email tomorrow. You can also check the website now, but um, email blast tomorrow. We acquired a bunch of Pelican special editions, current and several past years. Mm-hmm. Um, at a special stock reduction price that we have passed on to you. So we have more Pelican special editions than we've ever had at once at great prices. I'm talking like great prices. Um, So I had a couple, like I brought some home, which I think are in your new, where's your black, where's your reload Yeah, I brought a couple. I have some of my own. I was just gonna show you some of these because you guys haven't seen these in a while. There's a couple M800s, yep. There's the M805 Blue Dunes, the M800 Stone Garden, and the M800 Black Brown Stripe. Um, those are all on sale. Are here? Uh, all some of them are in there. The M600 Vibrant Orange and the M600 Violet White. The M120 Iconic Blue. I'll show you some of these things. Um, the M200 Olive Blue. The 205 Star Ruby, the 205 Clear Demo, the 200 Smoky Quartz. Where's it? Two? There might be one more I'm forgetting. Let's go ahead and just do the whole look. Uh, Brian had to get another 96 pen case because I don't have my pen cabinet it, like I do at work. So, so he asked me to bring all his studios home because he's going to shoot a video on the new studio. studio and then I went ahead and just brought a bunch of his ecos home so we'd have all the colors. But um, here I have some of these other ones I can go grab out of. You still have, like the tags on it. What do you think? I, I was in a rush. You're in a rush. That's cool. 
This is the M120 Iconic Blue. So it's a little bit different than the other Subrons and it's based good. on, um, you know, a vintage version of that. But, you know, piston, you have your, um, your ink window and stuff. So steel nib on that. This is an M600 600. Violet White. I love the M600 broads. There is no nib on this. I know why. This is one of the ones you had one sent ones to me. This is okay. This is not what is for sale. This is from Brian, Brian's pen cabinet, but that's also hilarious. It was like, look at the nib. Yeah, had a, oh, look at the nib. Oh. There is no nib on here. I, I have know. one of these personally, though. All my so we had done some Violet M600 with custom grinds from Gina Salarino, um, which spoiler alert, we may be working on something else with Gina. Too. We are but working on something. But else it's a ways out. Not on Pelican so on something else. It's gonna else. be it's gonna be a little ways up. But anyway. Um, so yes, I wanted all, the, all these things are for sale now. Yeah. I'm sending an email tomorrow to let people know about it, but all mm -hmm. the sales are currently live. So if yeah. you want to jump on it, cause we do have limited stock of certain nib sizes and stuff. So check it out. There you go. That M600 broad is Rachel's jam. M600 broad is and one the of, broad and the monocropper broad it is and basically my, any broad. No, the M600 broad is one of my favorite nibs. Which is broad there? isn't your favorite? You love the loom broad. I don't like Lamy. Not a Lamy broad fan? It's not broad enough. Not wet enough. There you go. There's a broad she doesn't like. I, I, you weren't a I, huge fan of the I Sailor broad either. I like it. You it's not, not my huge, favorite. You were not a fan of I Sailor I need to broad. give it another try. That was a 14 karat. Which broad? What are you talking about? Oh, you're right. You're king of pens. It was That's it a had 21 a little, karat broad. You're right. It had a little too much feedback for me. I like mine to be like butter on... Hot butter on glass. We went over this last Yes, week. we did. <laughs> Good we had this night. exact same conversation. Oh my goodness. Do plans on carrying the Pelican replacement nib units? No, no, not at this time. We've done it before, but there's the broad stubby. Um, not a little bit, a little slight, bit, a little bit, slight, but little not, bit. not, little bit. not, not too slight. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Um, hang on, let's see here. There's a good question, and I've lost it now. Anyway. <laughs> Brian says. Saying Brian needed another pen case is like saying a tree needed the rain. <laughs> That's true. I seriously debate about like, should I just bring my pen cabinets home? I did. Because I have so many pens here now. I'm not going to say I have more pens here than I have at work. Yeah. Because that's not the case. But I have a lot of pens here. A lot. We haven't hundreds, used our dining room in months. Hundreds to of eat. Pens. Well. Because there's stuff all over the table. Anyway. Yeah. Keep going. That's how it goes. All right. Um, Ocean Swirl is beautiful. That is one of my favorite pelicans that has favorite ever been made. pizza toppings. Ooh, y'all are going to hate mine. Pineapple. I love pineapple. I, I do pizza. love pineapple too. No, I love how it. about describe I your favorite it. pizza? Like, like when you go to- I have a very specific like, favorite pizza. Yeah, I know. When you like go to one of your like make your own pizza places, what do you do? Yeah, definitely. I like to I, use, I, got, I got one too. I like to use barbecue sauce as the base instead of pizza sauce. Because I live, I just love sweet. I have a sweet tooth. But I'm, so that is the base. I like chicken on it, but we're trying to eat less chicken. It's just a dietary thing. But I, I guess I like the chicken. So chicken or you know some kind of sausage or something like that. Um, bacon. Lots of cheese. Tons of mozzarella with Especially ideally like the, fresh mozzarella on it as well. Not in place of, but in addition to. So like a blanket of mozzarella with huge globs of mozzarella. In addition, so chicken, bacon, pineapple, pineapple, um, yeah, a little bit like salt oregano. You know, is little, that it? A little bit kind of stuff, and then like more, more barbecue sauce on top, like a little barbecue drizzle. Yeah, so it's pretty simple. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Rachel's got more. Go ahead, you can do your thing. Yeah, like, I mean, I was, like I'm, I'm gluten free, so you know, got to get a good gluten free crust. I do like mod pizzas, gluten free crust. It's mm -hmm. one of my favorites um, because it doesn't taste like cardboard. Um, still a little bit soft, but you know, it's actually cooked. I like pesto as my sauce. So like, and, and you can't get this stuff through like Domino's. I'm not talking about my Domino's no. order. That's that's different. It's different. Pesto. So they do do barbecue sauce as a base. They do. It's so good. Pesto as a sauce, mozzarella. I'll do the fresh here and there, but it's not as important to me. I don't do any meat. I, I don't mind bacon on pizza, but I don't do any meat on my pizza. I do all the veggies pretty much. Um, so like... <laughs> Jackie ate pizza for dinner. That's awesome. All the veggies and pineapple because like I used to think, oh, it's a veggie pizza or pineapple, Hawaiian pizza. 
No, when you add that pineapple to the veggies, game changer, game changer, delicious. It's just this little bit of sweet with mm. the crunch of everything else going on. I'll mm. do like the roasted garlic on there too. They have like seasonal veggies. I've had like roasted Brussels sprouts on it. Oh, so good. And then oregano and all the stuff, a little bit of pesto on top too. Um, but yeah, all the veggies. I don't do hot peppers, but um, green peppers, red peppers, mushrooms, spinach. Oh, fresh basil. <sighs> Gotta do fresh basil. So <laughs> poor, yes. Ar poor Arthur here is like Sailor Goulet exclusive. I've mentioned this like four times and you're talking about pizza. Yeah, I need to just, I need to pick some Pantone colors. That, that's where things are at. We're, we're planning for next year. It's going to be like ways out. We are, plan ways we are out. planning, we're talking our, about we are planning our first proposal for next year. I just need, guarantee. I need to finish putting guarantee. the proposal together, which means choosing Pantone colors. I know conceptually what colors I want, but I need to actually go find the right codes. And I just haven't done it yet. So um, the earliest mm -hmm. will be sometime next year, if, if it all goes well. That's, there our, you go. that's our plan. Yep. All right. Um, yeah, I, I'll do like a normal cheese pizza or like just pineapple sure, or whatever. Sure, sure, sure. I yeah, will I eat like pepperoni or like a sausage. Like I'll do a Supreme, whatever, but no anchovies, not donate that. No Ram banana peppers. Rambling Bard says, if you had to get rid of all but one pen and one ink color, what would you choose and why? I'd say the next one. I want the next one. Do you have a traveler's notebook <laughs> handy? I do. It's over in the other room, but I can go get you it. You get it. You have to yeah. duck under the light or you can go around. I don't know if I could narrow it down to just one pen and ink. Let's be honest. That's why I have all of them. Um... <laughs> Rachel, what ink do you pair with white or clear pens? Do I own any white or clear pens? I don't know if I do, but here's the beauty of that. Anything. Like, got the, got the, got the jazz hands going on. Anything. You can put anything in your pen. Um, that was ridiculous. Um, I don't think I own any clear pens. Like, this is blowing my mind now. I guess it could be like the pen I put black in because, or brown, because I don't have any pens like that either. You own Twisbees, but they have a pop of color. Yeah, and I match the pop of color. Right. Yeah. Um, you don't own any straight up literally clear anything. Pens? No. Anything? I don't, I don't think. Do you want me? Nothing. Do you want me, I'll go look real quick. While you, while you answer whatever question was about travelers. I own clear pens, and yeah, you just put whatever you want in them. I mean, it's usually blue. Um, travelers notebooks. So this is the larger size one. This is the olive color. And I replaced the ribbon with an orange one. It doesn't come with orange, but I thought it was interesting. So I put it on there. So this is a regular size, which is a tad big, but I wear cargo shorts. So I just stick it in my cargo shorts pocket and it just kind of sticks out at the top and that works for me. And I have really big hands, I have big handwriting and stuff like that. So I like the larger size. And uh, what I do is I keep it in here and I have several different notebooks inside. Um, you know, I actually have it configured so that I can have three different notebooks in here without having to use a rubber band. <gasps> it's a little hack, but you can do it. Um, basically, you can just like use, you can like weave the uh, string in between and uh, get it to fit in there without, uh, without having to use any rubber bands or anything. So it just makes it a little slimmer at the, at the spine. But I like three books and I use a dot grid for like business notes and stuff like that. Cause it's usually more like bullet points and to lists. And then I use the line stuff for like my personal stuff, like doctor's appointments and Do they have you know, epiphanies and things like that. I will use the line. Do they have perforated pages? Um, I believe Some a couple of, of them the do. We do have a, um, a filter on our site for perforation. So you yeah. can check that out. So to answer the white and clear pen question, I have about a hundred pens myself. I pulled all of the white or clear pens I have. I have uh, actually two uh, Kakunos. Okay, As That's you can clear. see, I have never inked never it. Never There's no converter in there. Never inked Still it. Still got a sticker on it. I know. I have a Lamy logo in That's pearl. not white or clear. Yes, it's oh, white. Oh, it's pearl. Okay. It's pearl. I can't tell that's pearl from this angle. It's pearl white. Pearl white. It is pearl white. It was a special edition a few years back, and I have inked fair it up, enough, and enough. I put alt gold grin in it. And here's the beauty. No, here's the thing. That ink matches no pens. So that is the nice thing about white True. and clear. If you're a matchy-matchy person like I am, it's an opportunity to use inks that don't have a pen match. Mm. And then the other one I have is a special one-of-one one that I got from 
Paniter, when I visited, made just for me. That is one of a kind. One of a kind, La Grande Beleza, um, with rose gold trim, which is inked up with something, or was. Ooh. What do you have it inked with, dear? I don't know. Maybe it's just dip test? I don't know. Ooh, it looks nice and crusty. I'm yeah. excited to well, clean that Well, you can tell me you. what color was in there, then. I'll let you know after it soaks for three days. It says one of the... one, Rachel, <laughs> and then uh, Forense, and then has the, uh, the, the date, date that we visited. went, which is really cool. That's pretty yes, cool. Yes, it is gorgeous. It's like a white it's marble red. color. It's a one of one. Brian has also a one of one that is exclusively his, too. So that was our... Our um our parting gift from our trip, which is really cool. I don't have fun. the M605 white. I skipped that one because I just don't like white pens. I like you didn't keep any of them. The M605 white. It's like white on oh, white. Oh, just white on white. No, no, no. You've got the white. No, I have the, the violet. I have the turquoise. I have the pink. I also have the vibrant green, which is all I would, green. I would call those white pens. But I do it begrudgingly. I do it begrudgingly because I don't like white pens. Um, part of the other issue I have is my grips, they, they stain, um, yeah. like my pink one is like tourmaline stain on there. Cause it's the only ink I use on that one. I buy them for the color and the nib. The white is an afterthought for me. It's you'd like to use the colors that like stain the most, Well, that's... like these hot pinks and stuff like that. It's like purples and whatnot. Have you ever thought of carrying the lower end Pelican pens? They have many steel nibs under hundred. Um, we used to years ago, like the Pelicano, Pelicano Jr., the script. Um, I believe they have a couple new ones. Um, that was like eight years ago that we carried those, like the twists and things like that. They're um, good pens. We've they write considered really well. The problem with the converter the, fit sucks on those. Converter pens. fit's not great. Like part, the grip drops off the converter when you Part of the other issue Amen. is what we have found it as us as a retailer is we've had a difficult time selling uh, pens that look like they're marketed for children. So like the Pelicano Jr. So like in theory, it's great for a kid. When you add the cost of the converter, everything, you're looking $30. You just mm -hmm. have a lot of other options at $30. Because mm -hmm. um, as an adult, you don't really want a childish looking pen. And then children, you don't want to even spend that much on a pen. So it's just, mm -hmm. it's kind of this weird no man's land. Yeah. That's a good question. So we're getting some good questions about like wood pen maintenance and stuff, mm -hmm. which makes sense because there's more wood like, pens out Like can you now. use Goulet pen flush and if it gets on the wood, is it going to be okay? Um, so what I would do if I were you is I would not use pen flush on the wood itself. Not because it's necessarily going to like strip away immediately. It's an ammonia based cleaner, which is not inherently going to like ruin the wood, but it's just having any kind of like moisture just like continually on that wood is not going to be the best. Um, so when you clean it, just take the grip off and you're cleaning it and there's no wood involved in cleaning this portion of it. Um, you know, if you happen to get ink on the pen or something like that, just use water and like maybe a light dish soap or something just really gentle on it. Um, if you get like ink all up inside the cap, basically use water, rinse it out, maybe a little dish soap. That's all you're going to need. You don't need to like really thoroughly clean out the cap very much because you can't really see it. It's not really an issue. Um, so that would be my suggestion. Don't use really any kind of chemical cleaners on the wood because it's just going to be risky. Someone asked about if I like the Benu Broad. You ordered the Grand Scepter X, your first Benu. Um, here's the Grand Scepter. We showed these last week. We glowed in the dark. Um, I'm keeping this broad it's for like myself. It's like a meme. It's like, a, it's like the head exploding like or like cat, you know, in space. I haven't, That's what I think of when I see these pens. So I haven't inked it up yet because <laughs> Brian is going to be shooting a video on these. So I didn't want to ink it up, you know, before he's done all that, just, you know, to keep them clean for him and everything. So I haven't inked it up yet, but I will let you know. And then mm -hmm. I will get to choose an awesome color to put in it. Yeah. Um, any good broad knit pens? All of them. Every, every broad is good. No, um, I love the Eco, the Twisby Eco. I love the Twisby 580. Um, on the gold nib side, I love the, L the M600 Pelican. Um, the Paniter Soft Broad is luscious. I love the Paniter. It's a good one. Um, good what one. else do I regularly use? The Elmo, which is a Yovo uh, steel broad. So basically any steel broad. I mm -hmm. like Lucky Charm King of Pens. Do you, we didn't. We don't have one here. Yeah. But that's still in stock now. Still being photographed. That's yeah. the thing. Or no, was, it's photographed. It's photographed, but you're not keeping one. 
Ah, uh, you know, when we get to like the king of pen sizes, ah. I have to I have to exercise restraint sometimes, you know. Thoughts on a blue ink to match the sea at dusk. This Ooh. is nice because you have so you many range. options. You, you can range. go the lighter blue, the turquoisey. You can go the mid blue. There's some kind of navy blue range in there. So you could go like a midnight blue. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, like a diamond blue there's like velvet. some royal blue in here. Mm -hmm. So you really have basically a pretty full I'd say range. almost any blue. Not anything with like a green tint to it. Oh, it's really no green. green. No, it's it's true, more of a true blue. I mean, there is a turquoise, but um, you could go blue black, and it would it would fit really well. Um, mm -hmm. Where to find my t-shirt or his t-shirt? <laughs> my t-shirt is not available anywhere. Ours was a, a custom made one we did. Mine um, was a store called L E E L L Y and Grace. Um, and it's super soft, like ridiculously soft. I love it so much. Um, Mine's not soft at all. Mine's like wearing cardboard. Well, we carry the- it's super old. This was like nine yeah, years Ellie, ago Ellie and Grace, E-L-L-Y and Grace. Mm -hmm. um, and it, the tri-blend is the super soft shirt. They have a lot of gorgeous designs. It's like hand lettered. And then, Jacob, you know. Jacob asks, is it advisable to heat set a triple tail more than once? Heat away as much as it takes. Yeah, you can keep it's you ebonite can, feed. So keep, ebonite, you can heat it again and again and again. As long as you don't heat it so much that you like melt or burn the thing, then you're fine. You can heat it over and over again. How do you feel about the? Oh, sorry. Will you carry ebonite sailor king of pens? Um, I don't believe it's available to us um, as we are not a bespoke retailer, but maybe maybe someday. Maybe in the future. Who knows? Um, when oh, is the good... Con seventy N coming to the U.S.? I'm not familiar with that. We'll have to inquire. I don't know what that is. I'll have to look that up. Sorry, your turn. Go ahead. Um, There's a question earlier about uh, any leather wrapped pens. Not a lot of them. I want to say there Platinum was. Platinum has some interesting ones. Like Platinum the sheep. has a sheep leather mm -hmm. pen. That Very not, obscure. Not widely available. I remember we did a special order for those one time. It was a corporate order. <laughs> that was what they chose. Like, All yeah, right. It, it was very difficult to coordinate because they just. Still make a lot of those. Like we literally had to like basically buy all of them from Japan. Graf, I've seen Graf do some some leather here and there. Yeah. Yeah, Graf would do it. Yeah, I really haven't seen anybody else with leather pens. They are not ideal for fountain pen ink. That is for sure. If you get like a drop of fountain pen ink on leather, it's oh, it stained. is past ten. We gotta wrap up. Yeah. A uh, few other questions, real quick. Where the Sailor Compass mm. come in a large size? No, it's just it's just the one. It's about the same size as a 1911s. It just has a steel nib um, and a few less trim things on it. Um, let's see. Have you ever done a video on how to properly clean a pen with a non-removable converter? So, like, yes, we have videos on how to clean um, a piston, piston, the um, crescent mm -hmm. filling pen. We're yeah. working on a power filler pen a video. Mm -hmm. We just haven't finished. The, we had the shot the footage. We just haven't edited it. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so definitely yes. for sure. Basically, you rinse water in and out, and in and out, and in and out, and in and out, and there's just no great. It's pretty hack. much. It's pretty much the process. <laughs> yeah. so, you can you can use a cup, or you can use running water. I mean, it's you, that's basically you do it over a thousand yeah. times, and it's mostly clean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Brian, have you uh, ever considered, this is from Haru, have you ever considered in uh, writing a book about fountain pens or your journey as a businessman? We've talked about writing a book for forever. Considered, yes. Started anything? No. But I feel like we're like so yeah. at the beginning of our story. And it's just like, um, I kind of want to see it like unfold. You I feel know? a little less like we're at the beginning. I feel like we're 10, entering 11, at least adolescence at this point. Going on 11 years of this business. Yeah. Yeah. We're still still relatively new. Let's let's get through COVID and then we'll uh, <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah, I mean, it's not off the table for sure. I could see doing something like that. I mean, we definitely don't have any time to even consider anything. Not right like now. That. No. 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 Down the road. No. And I would need like a ghostwriter or something. My writing abilities are subpar. All right. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Cool. We're going to cut it off there. It's 10 Keep 03. this with a UEF, I think, is the 3776th century. Yeah. 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 I like how I said we're going to cut it off there and you immediately <laughs> oh, I need answered to answer one more question. question. All right. We are going to go for real because it's after yeah. 10 and I need to make sure the children are in bed. They've been quiet, but that could mean a lot of things. Too quiet. <laughs> they're probably, Too quiet. They're probably reading. They're not asleep. They're, they're totally they're not asleep. They're reading. Have they brushed their teeth? 5% chance. Maybe. At max. We'll see. Have they brushed their teeth? Anyway. 
Thank you all for joining us. This has been a lot of fun. Yes. I was hesitant. Today was a really busy day. I'm exhausted. Like, yes. And then as soon as we finished all of our meetings and stuff, we had our offsite meeting and then we had this like planning meeting for like a research thing that we're looking to do. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to Home Depot and get 11 sheets of OSB and some insulation for a shed that and I'm trying to insulate. And pick up your prescription. And get my prescription and pick up dinner. And I did all that, came back, unloaded it all, showered, sat down to do this. Totally hot glue her hamster. Totally hot glue her hamster thing. <laughs> and then so I'm, it's like no rest at all since eight o'clock this morning. But it's all right. here we are. Love it. And then we're going to wake you up and do it great. all again tomorrow. Love it. We'll keep talking about the hamster. Yes. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful <laughs> evening and right on.